a doppelganger in the building. In this investigation of the old South Pittsburgh Hospital, attempts are made to interact with those that have passed away within these walls. But when you seek out the paranormal, caution is always a good practice, because you just might find exactly what you were looking for. Ooh, here we go. Don't be afraid to join us. Very few experience the paranormal. Most don't believe it's real. But we know the truth. That's why we're in search of... a real paranormal thing. The year is 1861. The Civil War is well underway. A war between the states one that put neighbor against neighbor, brother against brother. Until their differences could find common ground, the bloodshed was to continue until 1865. In 1862, along the Tennessee River, the Battle of Shiloh took place involving not only the Union and Confederate armies, but included tribes of local Native Americans as well. And once the Civil War was over, a total of between 800,000 to 1 million lives would be lost. The Battle of Shiloh was roughly a two days ride by horseback to the nearby town of Battle Creek Mine, Tennessee. In 1876, the town officially changes its name to South Pittsburgh. Unbeknownst to the residents there, the town sits atop a large deposit of limestone rock. In addition, there are also underground limestone caverns with flowing natural spring water that sits deep beneath the town as well. When you consider the number of deaths across these blood-soaked lands of the Civil War and put it with the elements of limestone and running water, it goes without question that these circumstances could actually be the recipe for something we commonly refer to today as, or you guessed it, paranormal activity. In this little town in Tennessee sits the old South Pittsburgh Hospital. Built in 1959, it served the community until it eventually closed its doors in 1998 due to claims of wrongful deaths, malpractice lawsuits, and so much more. In 2015, paranormal investigator Nathan Galler, accompanied by fellow investigator Mary Bland, attended a public overnight ghost hunt held at this location. Not surprising to learn after arriving is that the hospital was constructed directly over a limestone cave containing running water. These two elements separately are considered to be strong power sources for such activity. Together would be almost unlimited. This is what is believed to be what supplies the energy to sustain the activity within. And you couldn't ask for more than to have tour guides who have experienced the said activity firsthand. Motion picture actor Jim O'Rear, who during his many visits filming at this location, shared incredible bone-chilling encounters with us. Are you filming me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Lisa Crick, American Hauntings tour guide for our evening at the Old South Pittsburgh Hospital. A seriously sharp and knowledgeable host who's had many spooky encounters of her own to share. Stand here with me while they go down the hallway. Okay. <laughs> and this is where the shh guy comes out at you. Announcing our presence. Once inside with everyone in attendance, the tour began. Area. We've had um, a 
lot of shadow people. We see shadow people in here. Um, <coughs> flashes of light, um, balls of light. Um, if you're sitting here in the pitch dark, a lot of times it'll, it'll look like a flash bulb goes off. Sometimes I mean right in front of your eyes, just <laughs> bright white lights. Um, okay, the only part in the God. in the building that freaks me out is from here <coughs> and around the corner to the left where we came in. Um, I've never been comfortable in this area. Um, this this area too is where if you hear if you've heard of the Shusher Man, we call him the Shusher Man. He hangs out in this this hallway and the hallway to the left, um, and he likes to sneak up on you and he'll just get in your ear and go shh really loud, uh, and you never know which door he's gonna come out of. <laughs> When you visit this location, the atmosphere has a very end-of-the-world vibe to it. In this exact hallway, Mary's camera picked up an undistinguishable EVP. Listen for yourself. Ironically, this very similar EVP was captured at McPike Mansion in Alton, Illinois, only three years earlier. makes you wonder if they have an attachment, or are they being followed, or occasionally checked up on by someone, or something, on the other side. All of the, you'll get lost, I get lost in here as many times as I can. <laughs> um, these halls in here just wind and twist and run into each other. Um, there, there is an area downstairs here that this, this is the only way you can get to the downstairs in this part of the building, is through this area. This is where everything starts to get confusing, because now you can see all kinds of doors headed different ways, and hallways headed different ways, and all that. Okay, hey, we're going downstairs. outside in the parking lot there where we came in, um, who was shooting right then. And I had to come in and get a piece of lighting equipment down there in the, the living area. And well, he was also down there in that hall. So, <laughs> um, looks exact, but they don't, they won't look at you, they won't talk to you or anything like that. All I've ever seen them do is take on the form and just walk through the halls. And apparently they mimic voices too. They will. Uh, Stanley Daniel go through that? Yes, yes. They will mimic voices. They'll learn your names. They'll call you. Um, so it's never for a date, so... They you know. say that if you see one that looks like yourself, if you see yourself... <laughs> yeah. Stop! How do you do that? <laughs> yeah, but they will call you. So if somebody's calling you from another part of the building and you, you know, kind of be aware of where everyone is, um, because the instance she was talking about, one night we were here, we were filming a scene on the third floor and Daniel was down there getting into makeup, and he wasn't sure exactly where, where we were shooting, um, but he knew he'd just listened for all the, the noise, you know, the moving the equipment and all that kind of setup. So he came out from the, the living area, um, and the 
there's a stairway we're about to go into down here that goes into the basement. Um, one of our guys, which wasn't one of our guys, called him from downstairs, went, Daniel, down here! And he went down there and suddenly realized he was in pitch black and nothing else was down there. And this guy's like 300 pounds. I've never seen a 300 man, pound, a pound man run that fast. But he made it to the third floor like, like that. Um, so they will learn your name. They will call you. They will look like you. <laughs> a real paranormal thing will return. We now return to A Real Paranormal Thing. Here we are at the old South Pittsburgh Hospital in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. The pre-investigation tour was still in its early stages by maybe 20 minutes, and the anxiety levels were ripe and just about to escalate unexpectedly. There is a doppelganger in the building. They will mimic voices, they'll learn your names, they'll call you. Um, so but never for a day. They say that if you see one that looks like yourself, if you see yourself. <laughs> yeah. Stop! Why do you do that? Was that Jim? Jim, yeah. Jim, yeah. Yeah, his name is Jim. Uh, he, he, yeah. <laughs> he worked here for, I don't know, like 30 years or something like that. Um, and his home was pretty much in here. And the, it's, I haven't seen it since, what, September or something. It's usually a complete mess. Once we entered the basement region, we were escorted into the maintenance department where an employee known as Jim was stationed. Here he worked to keep the operations of the hospital functioning as best as he could. But here is also where unknown sounds, voices, and shadows have been experienced. She doesn't like people on her bed, so don't sit on the bed in this room unless you want to 
upset her. Um, but that's Nellie's room, and Nellie died in the corner. The other thing I warn you about is this room. When I told you the black shadow guy runs away from you or goes, this is the room he goes into. See that tile that's moved out of the way? Yeah. If you get close enough to him to, to chase him around, he goes right up in that hole. And I think that's where he comes out of probably too. I don't know what the deal is with the hole there. But I've seen him go up in there twice. To be certain the handheld devices are working correctly, Mary checks for high EMF, which is natural to emanate from fluorescent light fixtures. And now it was time. The investigation is officially about to begin. And as for the spirits that reside here, Let's hope they show themselves by coming out of the shadows. Let's also hope they're not malevolent. A real paranormal thing will return. We now return to A Real Paranormal Thing. Okay, it is 9.23. Yep. Ooh, here we go. And finally, Nathan and Mary have begun setting up cameras and prepping to venture ahead into the dark and silent hallways of the long, vacant hospital. Ooh, that's dark. When attending public paranormal events, Nathan makes a point of investigating as far away from the other guests as possible to reduce the chance of audio or video contamination. As Nathan sets up a stationary camera, Mary keeps an eye out behind them with her camcorder for any unexpected activity. Alrighty. Let's try the other one. Stationary mode. QLA mode. Told you the car was there, Cody. Believe me now. Nathan was referencing a conversation he had had a while back with an old co-worker who doubted the credibility that a car had been parked and left within the halls of this Anybody building. Here? Despite how incredible it may sound, it was believed to have been hidden inside by a doctor who fell behind in his payments. Say. Is there anybody in here? Can 
somebody to speak with us? Somebody please talk to us. Somebody beat? Can anybody come and talk to us, please? You've come a long way. Just to talk to you. somebody speak with us? There's nothing to be afraid of. We're friends. After investigating through the quiet corridors of the empty hospital for just under two hours, it was time to stop and change out their camera batteries and take a much needed rest. Who knows what might lie ahead for them on the other remaining unexplored floors? A real paranormal thing will return. We now return to A Real Paranormal Thing. Out of respect to the other guests, and so as not to capture contaminated evidence, they continued to bounce around the building and stay distant to avoid crossing paths.
are officially down in the basement. Anybody here? Can you make a knock sound? Unknown to them until they were able to review their footage, Mary's camera had once again captured an EVP. Here's what she caught. Anybody here? Can you make a knock sound? Is there anybody here? Any children, nurses, doctors? Jim, are you back here? This is Jim's area. Jim, are you here, sir? Yeah. We're here to say hello. I hope you're doing okay now. Sir, can you speak with us? Jim was the well-liked, long-employed maintenance worker slash janitor who worked there for many years. Some say he considered it home. That is until one day while in his work area, he suffered from diabetic shock and didn't pull through. Jim may have never left. Jim, can you say hello? We don't mean no harm. Touch the antenna? Can you come up to me and touch the antenna? Both things in both my hands have an antenna. Can you touch them? By the way, I apologize if I didn't introduce myself. My name is Nathan. This is Mary.
After a while, we realized we weren't going to get an answer. So we moved along. Something had gripped Nathan's arm. Apparently, judging by the surprise, someone or something was letting him know they were there. A real paranormal thing will return. We now return to A Real Paranormal Thing. Yes, they are totally sticking up. Having goosebumps and chills aren't natural when you're walking around in a hot building with no open windows or air conditioning. Nathan doesn't get very far before he again senses something unnerving. He stops and allows his senses to evaluate his surroundings. Just then, a tiny ball of light emerges from the wall behind him and travels upward as if watching. Within seconds, it disappears again into the wall. Whether or not this is something of importance is as good a guess as any. But whatever is aware of Nathan's presence is also not finished being curious of him. As though following him, he once again has a brief encounter of being touched. Anybody in this hallway right in front of me? Stop and talk to us. Don't be afraid. Oh. My arm, get over here. See it? Goosebumps? Mm -mm. Forearm. Camera can't really pick it up. See him? Goosebumps on my forearm. Yeah, now I kind of see him. They're going away now. Upon exiting the staircase, they carefully enter what appears to be a daycare. Hello, kids. Is anybody in here? Can you make one of those animals move? Can you move the ball maybe in the middle? Make it crash into one of the animals or the trucks. That would be fun. We want to play too. We want to see you move the ball. I bet you're really good at it. Can you do that or move the truck? After a few minutes of non-responsive investigating, they again moved along. But Nathan's visitor was still in tow. Yep. 
someone behind me. Oh boy. I am getting major chills on me right now. some of it. Not much on this one. I have it on Mac. I'm looking right at it. I can see it with my own eyes. You have the better. He attempts to debunk his experience by searching for an opening, a window, doorway, or even a vent. Something that might have allowed an airflow that may have created the chills he felt. But he discovers nothing. Thus, he concludes his experience could have been a genuine one. Nathan is about to enter what is known as Nellie's room. Little is known of her other than she was a very traumatized Nellie? patient. Nellie? sensor. It will just tell me if you're there. I mean no disrespect. I mean none whatsoever. Details are sketchy of her at best. Some say she did chores and helped out the staff occasionally. If you touch your bed, that will light up. Do that, sweetie. Nellie? Sweetie, can you, can you let us know you're here? looking to confirm that you're here, 
sweetie. They say she suffered from dementia. Can you do that? Didn't like anyone sitting on her bed. And sometimes when she was alone and struggled with the mental pain, could be found on the floor in the corner, hugging her knees and rocking. Can you do that, Nellie? Please? Can you do that? After about 20 minutes of inactivity, Goodbye. Nathan decides to close his session, attempting to interact with the spirit of Nelly. Disappointment does not describe this moment. Being sympathetic and respectful, however, does. Not long after leaving Nelly's room on the third floor, both a camcorder still recording to catch evidence and a powerful IR light each operating from separate, brand-new, fully-charged six-hour external batteries simultaneously drain in less than a minute. Directly across the hall from her room is where witnesses claim to have seen a dark shadow figure escape into the ceiling. They had their backs to it the entire time. Were they being watched? Is that why Nellie never interacted with Nathan? Possibly. At 2 a.m., they decided to end their investigation of the Old South Pittsburgh Hospital. Because of the physical interactions Nathan experienced throughout the evening, it was imperative that they both perform a cleansing ritual to rid themselves of any possible attachments he or she or both might have picked up. A closing prayer was recited out loud so as not to take anything unwanted back with them. Unfortunately, that doesn't always work out the way you want it to. Such is the life when you investigate the paranormal. Because, no matter the prayer, sometimes they choose to go home with you.